Have you ever stopped to think why? Even after achieving something you deeply desired, the feeling of satisfaction seems to last so briefly. It's curious, but the more we have, the more it seems we lack. The truth is that we live in a world where the yearning to have is constantly fueled. We are always chasing the next phone, the next car, the next big achievement, believing that this will finally bring us the happiness we seek. But then, when we get what we want, boredom sets in. The euphoria of the purchase passes quickly and soon there is a desire for something new. And so the race never ends. But why does this happen? Because we confuse accumulation with happiness. All the time we are bombarded with images of success that make us believe we need to have more to be more. And in this cycle, we forget a fundamental truth. What really fulfills us cannot be bought. That's why, even after getting that desired object, the feeling of emptiness returns. You find yourself caught in an endless search, thinking that the next conquest will be the solution when in reality, the problem lies in how we view what we already have. What if the real answer to this dissatisfaction was not in wanting more, but in changing the way we value what we already have? What if, instead of always looking forward, we learn to enjoy the present. It may seem counterintuitive, but the key to breaking this cycle is in finding satisfaction in simplicity and valuing the things that are already part of your life. It seems too simple a solution. That is precisely where the secret lies. Time spent on social media. Nowadays, it seems that time slips through our fingers without us noticing, and much of it is spent on social media. Have you noticed how a quick glance at your phone can turn into hours? It's not uncommon for people to spend an average of four hours per day connected. Over 50 years, that's almost nine years of your life dedicated to this. What is even more frightening is that this has become the new normal, what was once a tool for communication has now become a trap that distances us from ourselves. And that's where the danger lies. The disconnection from our own reality. The issue goes beyond time. With every like, every new follower, we feed an insatiable need for approval. And have you ever stopped to think that this constant search for digital acceptance is taking your attention away from what really matters? Instead of enjoying the moment, we are concerned with showing it to the world. Have you noticed that the landscape, the smile, or that beautiful dish only seem to have value when they are in a post? This creates a mental trap, a kind of digital validation cycle that ultimately is never enough. Be honest with yourself. How many times have you opened your phone to kill time? And when you realized you had spent an hour scrolling through the feed, this automatic behavior is one of the biggest traps of today. However, the impact goes far beyond wasting time. It's as if, little by little, technology is consuming our ability to live fully. The time that could be invested in something productive, in a real conversation, or in a moment of reflection turns into a vicious cycle of distractions. The most curious thing is that in the end, all this search for motivation and inspiration that we look for on social networks ends up distancing us from our own sources of motivation. It's as if we are looking for in others what is already inside us, but ignore because we are always too busy. The truth is life, the one that really matters, is happening outside the screen. And the time we spend with the phone is time that will never come back. One of the great challenges of this era is to realize how much we are becoming disconnected from ourselves and from the people around us. Social networks, which should bring us closer, are distancing us from what is real. We are always on the lookout for the next post, the next notification, but when was the last time you disconnected from everything and simply lived the moment? This is something we need to reflect on deeply, especially when we notice that life is passing by while we are distracted with the phone. If the idea is to find motivation and inspiration, maybe it's time to rethink the time spent on social networks. Instead of being sucked into this whirlwind of information and images that often do not add real value, 
How about starting to seek these things in real experiences? Life, with all its simplicity, is full of opportunities to inspire us. But for that, we need to be present and connected with what really matters. This leads us to an interesting point. And when do we stop living the moment, passing to post for others instead of enjoying the now? Posting for others, instead of living the moment today, the habit of recording each moment for social networks has become almost automatic. For example, at a friend's birthday, the first action of many is to look for an old photo on the cell phone and post a tribute on Instagram, instead of simply calling or sending a personal message. The need to show the world this proof of friendship is a reflection of how much we prioritize what others will see instead of focusing on what we really feel. This reveals how often we are more concerned with appearing present than actually being there. These gestures, which were once intimate and sincere, are now transformed into content. Even in the most delicate situations, such as the loss of a loved one, we see people posting black and white photos on stories, almost as an obligation to publicly demonstrate pain. But is this really necessary? In moments like these, what should prevail is silent reflection with those close to us instead of public exposure of feelings. In the end, life should not be lived for others, but for oneself. When we think about the significant moments we share, it's worth asking, are we doing this because we really want to or because we feel we must show it to others? Life, in a way, has become a showcase where displaying each step has become a priority. However, the true essence of any experience lies in the experience, in the genuine exchange, not in how many likes or comments we receive. When we get carried away by the need for validation, we end up losing the depth of what really matters. There is nothing wrong with wanting to share an achievement or a special moment, but it is essential to question whether this is being done with the right purpose. Perhaps the best way to celebrate a friendship, for example, is to do something simple and true, like a call or a surprise visit. When we remove the attention from the digital audience and focus on the person we are connecting with, the emotional impact is infinitely greater. Sometimes the simplicity of a sincere message is worth much more than a public post full of visual effects. The true connection lies in authentic exchange, one that happens away from the eyes of those who are just observing through the screen. The motivation to share something should come from a genuine desire to share an experience and not from the need to be seen. The inspiration to live the moment instead of just showing it is something we urgently need to recover. When we put the phone aside and allow ourselves to live fully, we discover that life has much more to offer than a beautiful photo on the feed. And this leads us to a crucial point the ostentation of achievements that seems to be becoming the new norm. But are these incessant posts really about the achievements themselves or about the need for external validation? Ostentating achievements and the need for validation. The ostentation of achievements has become almost an automatic reflex on social networks. From a dish of food in a restaurant to a promotion at work, everything becomes a reason to post and wait for validation from others. But why do we feel this need to share every small victory? Deep down, this practice reveals a constant search for external approval. It's as if our achievements are only truly valuable when they are seen and recognized by other people. However, does this really make a difference in our happiness? This constant exposure of victories on social networks creates a sensation that we are only progressing when others are watching. It's as if simply celebrating silently for ourselves is not enough. Society increasingly conditions us to measure our success by the number of likes and comments instead of the real value of our accomplishments. It is necessary to ask, does this external validation really have the power to motivate us? Or does it just distance us from the true meaning of our achievements? The problem with this ostentation is that it often prevents us from enjoying moments in a more intimate and personal way. Think of a dinner with friends where everyone is taking photos and posting instead of enjoying each other's company. 
In the end, the most memorable thing is not the conversation, the laughter, or the food, but how many people reacted to that post. This vicious cycle distances us from the true essence of experiences, and the motivation becomes only about exposure. The key to breaking this pattern is to redefine our relationship with our achievements. Not everything needs to be shared, and often the greatest victories are those we celebrate in silence, away from prying eyes. How about the next time you achieve something important, keeping the moment just for yourself, or for those closest to you? This does not diminish the value of what was achieved. On the contrary, it often makes the experience even more special. Learning to value what we have without the need for exhibition is an essential step in finding peace and contentment. Furthermore, by stopping the search for external validation, we open up space to find internal motivation, that which does not depend on the opinion of others. True inspiration comes from within, and it is what moves us towards our deepest dreams. When you learn to live without needing constant approval from others, life becomes much lighter and more authentic. And it is important to remember that social networks, with all their superficiality, do not always reflect the truth of who we are. But as we stop seeking external validation, a new question arises. Can we feel complete with what we already have, or are we always wanting more? This leads us to think about constant dissatisfaction and the endless desire to always want more. Constant dissatisfaction and the desire to always want more. Dissatisfaction seems to be a hallmark of our time. We are never fully satisfied with what we have, and this is not something new, but it has intensified in the digital era. It's as if we are always looking to the next goal, the next desire, without ever stopping to appreciate what we have already achieved. If you have a bicycle, you soon think about how it would be to have a motorcycle. If you already have a motorcycle, you dream of a car. This chain is endless because society trains us to always want more, as if the next acquisition was the key to happiness. But what many do not realize is that by focusing only on the future and on desires that have not yet been fulfilled, we lose the ability to value the present. A clear example of this is the cell phone you are using now. Perhaps a few years ago it was a dream, something you couldn't wait to achieve. Today, however, it no longer seems so special because your mind is focused on the next launch. And so we continue in this relentless race, always wanting more but never feeling complete. This constant dissatisfaction has its roots in the comparisons we make with others, especially on social networks. We see a person with a luxury car or traveling the world and automatically think, I also need that to be happy. However, what we forget is that this person, even with all these achievements, is probably desiring something even bigger. This vicious cycle of comparison and desire is dangerous because it keeps us trapped in an eternal race where the finish line never arrives. What is really lacking is the ability to look at what we already have and feel gratitude. True happiness does not come from the possession of material goods, but from valuing what is already around us. A practical exercise is to pause from time to time and reflect on the achievements already reached. Looking back and realizing how much you have evolved can be a powerful source of motivation. The inspiration we often seek is sometimes in the small things we have already achieved and that we forget to value over time. Being satisfied does not mean stopping dreaming or seeking improvements, but learning to balance future desires with gratitude for the present. This is an essential key to living a fuller life and being at peace with oneself. When we recognize that happiness is on the journey and not just in the arrival, we can appreciate the small moments of life more. It's about living the now without rushing to reach the next big goal. And speaking of appreciating the present, we also need to question how we are relating to the people around us. Are we, like with our material goods, also creating superficial relationships and disconnecting from what is most important? 
The superficiality of relationships and disconnection from reality. Social networks, with all their promise of connection, are ironically distancing us from what is more real. Human relationships are becoming increasingly superficial. Where there were once hugs and sincere conversations, today there are emojis and quick comments. It seems that we are gradually trading human warmth for the coldness of a screen. When was the last time you had a deep conversation without the distraction of a cell phone in your hand? We are disconnecting from people even when they are right next to us. The superficiality of online interactions can be seen in moments that previously required intimacy. Instead of sharing feelings personally, we opt to post public texts as if exposure was proof of affection. A birthday, for example, is no longer celebrated with a warm phone call, but with a post full of filters and hashtags. Does this really strengthen relationships? The true value of a friendship or a relationship lies in real exchanges, in moments lived side by side, not in posts shared for the world to see. What social networks do is give us a false sense of closeness. We see someone's updates and feel that we are following their life, but in reality, we only know what he or she chooses to show. This creates an illusion of connection, while in reality, deep and meaningful conversations are increasingly scarce. A clear example of this is how we prefer to send quick messages instead of spending time in a real conversation. The motivation to truly connect is being replaced by quick and superficial interactions. What is sadder is that this disconnection is happening not only with others, but also with ourselves. Often, we are so focused on showing others how much we care that we forget to actually feel. When was the last time you stopped to reflect on how you are feeling without thinking about how this will be perceived by others? This internal disconnection is a direct reflection of the superficiality with which we live our relationships. Rescuing depth in interactions is not complicated but requires effort. It involves turning off the cell phone and truly paying attention to the people around you. A good way to start is to reserve moments when the phone is set aside, whether it's during a family dinner, a conversation with friends, or even personal reflection moments. These moments of total presence are rare today, but extremely valuable for reconnecting with reality and strengthening the bonds that really matter. This growing disconnection does not happen only in human relationships. It is also present in our relationship with the world around us. By focusing too much on what is material, we end up ignoring the simplest and free things that life has to offer. And it is precisely about this that we will talk next. The value of simplicity and free things. In the fast-paced rhythm in which we live, it is easy to forget the value of simple things. We are so focused on acquiring material goods and achieving more that we end up ignoring the wonders that life offers us for free. A sunset, the sound of birds, the smell of wet earth after rain, these are gifts that are always at our disposal but go unnoticed while we look at the screen of a cell phone or chase the next goal. The truth is that the simplest and free things are often those that bring the greatest satisfaction and inner peace. The relentless pursuit of more material achievements makes us forget that true wealth lies in what cannot be bought. Think of moments of difficulty or illness when all we desire most is health or time with the people we love. In those hours, we realize that no material good can replace the peace of mind that simple things provide. When was the last time you allowed yourself to sit in silence and just observe life around you without thinking about the next desire for consumption. It is curious how the more we have, the more we forget to value what we already possess. By focusing on acquiring things, we lose contact with what is already around us. That is why simplicity has so much power. It brings us back to what really matters. A good example is the practice of meditation or mindfulness, which helps focus on the present, setting aside external distractions. By reserving moments to be in contact with nature or simply with yourself, you discover an infinite source of motivation and inspiration. 
There is no problem in desiring things or working for material achievements, but it is important not to lose sight of what really brings happiness. Imagine a peaceful walk in a park, unhurried, without notifications on the cell phone, or even the pleasure of an unpretentious conversation with a friend without the concern of recording the moment for social networks. These small moments of simplicity have the power to connect us with what is essential, something that luxury and consumerism cannot provide. True wealth is not in how many things you accumulate, but in how you feel about what you already have. People who learn to value simplicity find joy in things that really matter, health, authentic relationships, and moments of peace. And these are the moments that, in the end, will bring the feeling of fullness that we so seek. It is necessary to regain the ability to be grateful for the free and small things that make life unique. However, while we chase simplicity, we are often also trapped in a race that seems endless. The famous rat race is not just about work, but about the mentality of never being satisfied with what one has. And that is what we will talk about next. The rat race and the illusion of success. The famous rat race is a trap in which many of us fall without even realizing it. It's not just about working tirelessly to earn money. It's actually a mental state, a relentless search for something that always seems out of reach. We are constantly chasing more more money, more recognition, more status. The problem is that even when we achieve these goals, the feeling of dissatisfaction persists and soon a new target emerges. Life goes by and we are always running but never really getting anywhere. This cycle can be easily observed in the material goals we set. When someone conquers a new car, for example, the initial satisfaction lasts little. Soon the desire for something better arises, such as a more luxurious car, a larger house or any other status symbol. The motivation for these achievements does not necessarily come from a genuine need, but from social pressure and the belief that to be successful, one must always have more. But is true success measured only by what we accumulate? The rat race gives us the false impression that if we have more, we will be happier. However, this mindset makes us forget to value what we have already achieved. What was a great victory yesterday today no longer seems enough because the focus is always on the next goal. This leaves us trapped in a cycle of dissatisfaction where happiness always seems to be a step ahead. And that's where the illusion of success becomes dangerous. We are never fully realized because we always believe something is missing. Success. Instead of focusing exclusively on material achievements, how about reflecting on what truly brings peace and satisfaction? True success lies in finding balance, in being grateful for what you have, and in living in a way that aligns with your own values. A practical example is to redefine your goals. Instead of only setting financial or status-related objectives, why not include goals related to well-being? quality of life and connection with the people you love. Learning to live outside this race requires a new mindset. It's necessary to realize that the value of life isn't only in what we accumulate, but in how we live it. By freeing ourselves from the illusion that something is always missing, we open ourselves up to appreciate what truly matters. Quality time, genuine moments of happiness and deep relationships True motivation and inspiration to keep moving forward do not come from external achievements, but from the feeling of being at peace with oneself. This process of rediscovery is essential for finding balance. But before we move forward, it's important to think about how we are living in the present and if we are truly in touch with ourselves. This brings us to the next issue. What is the importance of being present and in touch with our own thoughts and emotions? The importance of being present and in touch with yourself. We live in an era where silence and solitude have become uncomfortable for many. The need to be constantly connected, distracted or entertained has distanced us from one of the most important aspects of life, connection with ourselves. 
The simple act of stopping and listening to your own thoughts has become rare. We are always holding a phone, filling every minute with some kind of stimulus. But when was the last time you allowed yourself to be fully present without any distraction, just feeling the moment? This inability to disconnect makes us lose the opportunity to reflect on life, on our emotions, and on what really matters. A classic example is people who can't take a simple walk without their headphones. It seems that we are always running away from ourselves, trying to fill time with anything that distracts us. Being truly present means disconnecting from all these distractions and connecting with what's around us, and most importantly, what's inside us. It is in this silence that we find clarity. Interestingly, these moments of pause can be incredibly refreshing and inspiring. There is a unique beauty in doing something simple, like walking without hurry, just observing the details around you, the bird's songs, the breeze on your face, the sound of your footsteps. These are moments that may seem small, but have the power to reconnect us with the essence of life. The true motivation to keep seeking something better can arise in these moments of silence, where we can reflect clearly on our desires and goals. The big question is, how do we regain this ability to be present? A practical suggestion is to start incorporating small moments of disconnection into your daily life. It can be during breakfast without your phone on the table, a quiet reading without interruptions, or even a brief meditation at the beginning of the day. The important thing is to create spaces where you can listen to yourself. Over time, this helps to regain contact with yourself, strengthening inner peace and the ability to face challenges with more serenity. The truth is that when we manage to be present, life takes on a new meaning. Anxiety decreases and excessive worries dissolve. Being in touch with our own thoughts and emotions is fundamental to finding emotional and mental balance. Additionally, this habit allows us to be more grateful for the present, recognizing the value of the now without the need to always rush toward the next goal. When we live this way, we find an internal source of motivation that drives us without wearing us down. However, for many people, this process is difficult because boredom is frightening. Being alone with yourself without distractions is something many avoid at all costs. Let's explore this issue further. Why has boredom become so scary, and how can we better handle it? Boredom and the difficulty of dealing with silence. Boredom is undoubtedly one of the most avoided sensations these days. The idea of doing nothing, of being alone in silence, seems almost unbearable to many people. We live in a time when any empty space must be filled, with a show, a playlist, or social media, but what does this reveal about our relationship with ourselves? Perhaps we are running away from boredom because it forces us to face something we find difficult to handle, silence, our own mind and our own feelings. However, boredom is not something to be feared. It can be a powerful opportunity for introspection and personal growth. Think of elderly people who often spend hours in silence just observing the world around them. For many of us, this may seem strange, but in fact, they are connected to something we have been losing over time. The ability to be at peace with the present without the constant need for external stimuli. What if boredom was actually a gateway to true motivation and inspiration? It's common to believe that boredom is an enemy of productivity, but it can be exactly the opposite. When our mind is not occupied with distractions, it has a chance to wander, to create, to reflect. Great ideas often arise in these moments of apparent emptiness. By allowing yourself to be bored from time to time, you open up space for creativity and mental clarity. If you want to test this, try putting your phone aside for 10 minutes and just observe what happens. You might be surprised by what your mind is capable of producing when it's not overloaded with information. The difficulty in dealing with silence is also linked to the fear of facing our own thoughts. That's why many people avoid boredom by filling every second with some form of distraction, but by doing so, we are only postponing the encounter with ourselves. 
Facing boredom can be uncomfortable at first, but it's a practice worth cultivating. When you learn to be okay with silence, you discover a new source of peace and internal motivation. A good exercise is to set aside daily moments where you do absolutely nothing. It can be just sitting in silence, no music, no phone, no stimulation. These moments are essential to learning how to handle boredom and developing a healthier relationship with your own mind. Over time, what once seemed uncomfortable transforms into a space of serenity and reflection. Silence often speaks louder than words. But the main question is, can we turn this relationship with boredom into something positive and more importantly, change how we relate to our phones? This tool that was supposed to help us has often become a prison. Let's talk about that next. The need to change our relationship with our phones. The cell phone, which started as a tool to make life easier, has quickly become an extension of ourselves. It's present in almost every moment, when we wake up while we eat before we sleep. It seems that we can no longer live without it. But the truth is that this dependency has created an invisible chain. The phone, which was supposed to give us more freedom, now controls us. The question that arises is, who is in control, you or your phone? This dependency affects not only the time we spend on it, but also the quality of our relationships and how we deal with life. How many times have you interrupted a conversation to check a notification, or spent hours scrolling through the feed without realizing it? These small actions, which seem harmless, accumulate and take our focus away from what really matters. The need to always be connected has become an addiction, and taking back control requires effort and awareness. One of the best ways to start changing this relationship is to make it harder to access your phone when it's not necessary. Leave the device far away while studying or working, disable unnecessary notifications, or even set times without phone access. These are simple but very powerful actions. It may seem challenging at first, but little by little you will notice that when you put the phone aside, your mind feels lighter and you start being more present in the moments that truly matter. When the phone stops being the center of attention, something magical happens. The real world becomes more interesting. The motivation to make better use of your time arises naturally and inspiration comes from sources that don't depend on a screen. Try this experiment. Spend an entire day without social media and see how life gains more color and depth. This doesn't mean abandoning technology, but rather learning to use it in your favor and not the other way around. The important thing is to understand that the phone should be a tool, not the master of your time. When you control the use of the device, you begin to realize that you don't need to be available for everything and everyone all the time. This opens up space for what really makes a difference in your life, moments of true connection, introspection and tranquility. After all, true motivation and inspiration come from living life fully, without the constant distractions that pull us away from the present. But part of this change also involves stopping the comparison with others on social media. The constant comparison with perfect lives posted by other people can be one of the biggest traps of the digital world. Let's explore this issue next. The illusion of constant comparison on social media on social media, everything seems perfect. Photos of exotic trips, luxury cars, expensive meals, and flawless bodies fill our feeds daily. The problem is that these images create a dangerous trap, constant comparison. Seeing these posts, it's easy to feel like you are falling behind, that your life is not as exciting, or that you haven't achieved enough. However, what we don't realize is that most of these images are carefully edited and selected. We are comparing our real life with all its ups and downs to a filtered version of someone else's reality. This constant comparison generates a cycle of dissatisfaction. What we see online is just part of the story, the good part, while we live our full lives with all the challenges and difficult moments that rarely appear on social media. This makes others' achievements seem bigger than they really are and ours smaller. 
However, we need to remember that success and happiness are unique to each person. What makes sense for someone may not be what will truly bring fulfillment to us. Happiness is not a competition. The problem is that social networks have turned life into a showcase where every moment must be perfect and worthy of being shown. It's easy to get lost in the illusion that the grass is always greener on the other side, when in reality, we all have our struggles, fears and insecurities. The secret to breaking this cycle is to remember that social media doesn't show the whole reality. They are just part of people's lives, and often that part is carefully crafted to look better than it is. A practical way to deal with this comparison is to limit the time spent on social media, and most importantly, be more conscious of what you consume. How about following profiles that truly inspire you, that promote messages of motivation and personal growth, instead of focusing on profiles that only display ostentation? And more importantly, how about using that time to focus on your own journey and your own achievements, no matter how small they may seem? Comparison is only valid when it's between who you were and who you are becoming. The key is to shift the focus. Instead of spending energy comparing yourself to others, turn your attention to what you can improve in yourself. When you stop looking so much outward and start focusing on what truly matters in your own life, the feeling of peace and motivation increases. Remember that every person has their own pace and true success is not defined by likes or followers, but by how fulfilled you feel in your own journey. However, this search for digital validation is not limited to comparison. There is another factor that fuels this trap, the addiction to likes and the constant need for online approval. Let's talk about that next. Addiction to digital validation and the search for likes. Social media has brought with it a new currency, likes. Each like, comment or new notification acts as a dose of approval that feeds our ego. The problem is that this has turned into a real emotional dependency. The cycle of posting something and waiting for the digital response can be compared to a drug for the ego where each notification activates a temporary sense of satisfaction in the brain. But just like a drug, this satisfaction is fleeting, and soon the need for more arises, creating a vicious cycle. This addiction to digital validation makes many of us stuck in an endless search for approval. If a photo or post doesn't receive as many likes as expected, we immediately feel a void, as if the value of what we shared depended solely on others' reactions. This is extremely harmful because we end up associating our self-esteem with numbers on a screen. The question that arises is, are we living for ourselves or for the applause of others? The impact of this search for likes is evident in how we start shaping our lives to please the public. We post what we know will generate engagement, not necessarily what reflects who we are or what we are truly feeling. How many times have you adjusted a photo, the angle or the filter, thinking about how it would be received? This behavior distances us from who we truly are because we begin to prioritize the digital appearance over living the real experience. Breaking free from this cycle of digital validation requires a change in mindset. A good exercise is to ask yourself, would I do this if no one could see it? This simple reflection helps distinguish between what we do for ourselves and what we do to seek external acceptance. Try to reduce the importance you give to likes and focus more on experiences that truly hold value for you. After all, true motivation for living cannot come from a screen, but from real connections and things that bring meaning to your life. It's also important to reconnect with what is most authentic within you. Instead of worrying about how many people will react to a post, focus on living moments that are genuinely important. Life outside of social media is infinitely richer and more meaningful. The more we distance ourselves from this relentless search for digital validation, the more we find peace and inner balance. 
And finally, it's worth reflecting on how social networks condition us to live for others' gaze when true happiness lies in freeing ourselves from these expectations. After all, what good are hundreds of likes if inside you feel empty? It's time to reconnect with what truly matters, living for yourself and not for others. So what are you waiting for to apply this knowledge? Start today by making small changes that over time will transform your life. Challenge yourself to spend more time with the people you love without digital distractions. Try looking at your achievements more intimately without needing others' eyes to validate them. Happiness is not in the next material good or in others' approval. It's in how you choose to live the now. Are you ready to get out of this endless race and live more fully? If you are truly committed to making this change, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to continue learning about these topics. There's much more to discover about how to live a balanced, happy and free life from the constant pursuit of more.